Happy New Year. Thank you. <laughs> this is my favourite T-shirt. It's beginning to get a bit un um, washed out, a bit baggy round the neck. But what matters is what it says on there. It says... Everywhere is within walking distance if you have the time. I absolutely love walking. I love walking in the mountains, Scotland, Wales, Lake District. I love walking um, on the coast. Yesterday we were walking on the beach in North Wales. We discovered walking on the Pembrokeshire coast this year. Fantastic walking. But most of all, I love walking locally to where we live. Because thankfully within 60 seconds I can be out in the open countryside. And um, it's been no hardship to us over the past 18 months, the times we've been confined to where we live. Because it's a great place for walking. Now, as I walk, I like to look up and look around. Uh, I like to gaze. And because of that, I've seen loads and loads of wonderful sights, particularly birds. Um, there's a little stream near where we live, and there's a kingfisher lives on it. And I'll start at the beginning of the stream, and the kingfisher will suddenly dart down about 20 meters, and I walk slowly until I get as close as I can. And then it flies down another 20 meters, and I have about six or seven sightings of the kingfisher. If I look up, I can usually see a bird of prey, usually a buzzard, just circling, just coming round, just looking at what it can see on the ground. A couple of weeks ago, though, I was walking along by the stream, and here the kingfisher went, and then suddenly this great white bird suddenly went out of the hedgerows and began to fly across the field. It was a barn owl, and it was just drifting like a ghost across the flooded field. Um, I met Dave a few weeks before Christmas to plan the, uh, the carol service. More about that later. Um, and I was just looking at the trees around. And this tree creeper started to climb down the tree. It's a weird bird. It's, it looks like a little mouse. And it tends to go down and around, you very rarely see it fly. All because I'm looking up. I walk frequently with a companion. And that companion is rather different to me because that person looks down at the ground when they walk. And it's because they're very aware of things they could trip over of rocks, or of mud, or of puddles that they're going to get their feet wet. And it's a good idea. But the only problem is, that person hardly ever sees the kingfisher. I'll say, look, there it is. Whir, 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 whir. And it's gone in a flash, because you have to take your chance. Now, don't get me wrong, 
It's a very good idea to look down. I am notorious for tripping up, for getting my feet wet, um, for coming back with uh, mud all over my boots. But my companion hardly ever sees the kingfisher. I want to read a few verses from Colossians. Colossians chapter 3 and verses 1 to 4. You have been raised to life with Christ. So set your hearts on the things that are in heaven where Christ sits on his throne at the right-hand side of God. Keep your mind fixed on things there, not on things here on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. Your real life is Christ, and when he appears, then you too will appear with him and share his glory. How are you at looking? Do you look up or do you look down? There's loads of things that we could uh, look down at. Things that, things that are actually very, very important. I mean, it's very tempting to spend loads and loads of time looking down just now at COVID. It is the dominant factor in the lives of Many of us, particularly the vulnerable generation, okay? Um, who can we be with? Where can we meet with them? How many people have had negative tests? I hope you've all done your tests this morning, all right? I won't ask you to put your hand up. Um, what's the guidance? I mean... Christmas and New Year was, was just uh, dominated by this. We had to plan. We were looking down at the details. Or else maybe you can be looking down at uh, finance. It really is such an issue. The food bank is the proof of that for people within this town. And as we look forward into this new year, I mean, energy prices are going to increase by 50%. The price of this is going up. The price of that is going up. Inflation is going up. There's plenty of scope for looking down at finance. But also... Maybe you spend time looking down at your relationships with other people. I wonder what so-and-so thinks. Did they get them the right present? Uh, oh, did they say the right thing or the wrong thing? Have I missed them out? You can constantly be wondering about what people are thinking of us. Or on the other hand... I won't talk about my in-laws, but we can be bottling our irritation that other people have for us. We can be looking down. We could be spending our time on being so, so worried. There's also the issue I find of I'm looking down. As a Christian... I have to stand aside from so many of the norms of society nowadays. And I have to guard every word that I have. On the one hand, there's my attitude to the material world. There's a whole industry that is geared to making society feel envy. And I have to guard myself from getting pulled in to that. I have to guard myself from appearing to be judgmental, but at the same time wanting to say, in the old phrase that uh, used to be used amongst Christians, 
we must live simply so that others might simply live. Or else there's the whole area where I can be looking down, guarded about my attitudes to um, sex and gender issues. I want to be welcoming. I want to be loving to everybody, regardless of what your sex issue might be, what your gender issue might be. But I also want to stand for what God says he stands for. And I can find myself looking down and being worried about every word that I say. Other people can be looking down about time. Either they've got too much time on their hands or they've got too little time. Even within the church, it's so easy to find ourselves looking down. Now, that carol service was wonderful on the night, but Dave and Nick will tell you, that was a nightmare for me. I found myself looking down as so-and-so couldn't be involved, so-and-so couldn't be involved, this person couldn't do that, that person couldn't do that. And I just got absolutely bogged down, with down being the word. Each of these things might be significant in our lives. And they need to be considered. You know, COVID's important. Finance is important. Saying the right thing to the right person. It's all important. But we can spend so much time... Um, yeah. It's like Martha that Jeremy started the service off with. She was distracted. She was doing the looking down to the housekeeping issues. And she didn't see the kingfisher. The Bible never actually uses that image of the kingfisher, the Jesus. But in Colossians, Paul gives us the advice not to look down, but to look up. He says, set your heart on heaven. Keep your mind fixed there. In other words, look up. Why does he say that? Have I lost something, Dan? I'm, I'm coming back. That's good. I'll be back. Um, why does he say, look up? First of all, because that's where Christ sits with God. Set your hearts on the things that are in heaven where Christ sits on his throne at the right-hand side of God. We spent Christmas concentrating on the little baby. We spent Easter concentrating on the crucified Christ. But that's not where he is now. That place where Jesus sits, where Christ sits, is at the place of power and control. In a daily world where life can often seem out of control or in the control of others, full of its rocks and mud and puddles, Paul encourages us to look up. Look up to the real power station. Um, <laughs> I basically feel I'm summing up what's already come in the, in the service so far because my next phrase is look up to the morning glory of the rising sun. <laughs> and that's exactly what we had in tongues from Naomi and the interpretation with Dave, isn't it? Look up to the morning glory of the risen sun.
the source of love and peace and stability. That's the first reason we are looking up to Christ. But the second reason is because that's where we actually belong. For you have died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. That's the reality. This is merely the shadow. You know, if you go to a wedding, there are those little place cards at the wedding reception saying that is where your place is in the wedding reception. That's just what it's like for us. Our place names are there next to Christ in heaven. It's reserved for us. It's saved for us. And that's where we should be looking. And finally, Paul encourages us to create that as a frame of mind. That's where Christ is. That's where we belong. So create a frame of mind in which we look up, not down, as our first reaction. Keep your mind fixed on the things there, not on things here on earth. Don't get distracted. Now, when Paul says, keep your minds fixed, or other translations had it, set your mind, it's not a, oh, I'll do it, I'll do it. It's, it's what they can, t- it's, it's what, it's what in linguistic terms they call a continuous present. It's keep on doing this. Keep on setting your mind. Go on doing it all the time. We are about continually reorienting our focus. Um, It's like Kate said, put on, it's about putting on something. Now, personally, every morning, I put something on. Every morning. You... (laughs) Whoosh! (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) So, every morning, we keep on setting our sights. We keep on looking up. Um, And as you keep on doing that discipline of looking up, not looking down, so it will become more and more natural. Sue, my wife and I, we find so many times the two of us have exactly the same thought at exactly the same time. We both start to say it. That's not because we're mind readers with each other. It's because we've had uh, 55 years of seeing the same sights, of hearing the same sounds, of smelling the same smell, of tasting the same things. And the more you do it, the more you become one. That's what Paul's encouraging us to do. To keep on daily, hourly, minute by minute. Keep on looking up to where Christ is. Our minds and consciences are informed. Informed by what would Jesus do here? Where would he be looking? We're oriented towards him. Um, Just like a compass will point towards, I'll get this right, Alan, geographical north. 
which is not quite the same as true north, um, we will be looking up as our first reaction. We get to know Christ so well that we're up there with him. When we glance around at the rocks and the mud and the puddles of everyday life, we'll find that we are beginning to see them through his perspective. And even if we can't see the solution, yeah, even if we have just tripped, even if we have just slipped, we know he's there, right there with us. And he will be picking us up. He will be taking us on. So... Have you made a New Year resolution? Here's the simple one. Look up, not down. See the sun shining down. It starts as a deliberate act, but the view's good. And when Christ appears with him, with, and when Christ appears in glory, we'll be there with him. I hope you also get a view of the kingfisher. <laughs> Jeremy. That was so brilliant, Brian. Thank you so much. Um, I don't know.